Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, for your patient, I was writing an email to let everyone know. So, if you miss midterm two, so you will have the opportunity to make up your exam tomorrow night. I just sent everybody the email regarding to the details. Okay. Uh, thanks for so much for your patient. So now let's uh, back to our um, slides. So we are in the chapter to understand the determination of GDP through the lens of demand and the supply at the same time. The demand and the supply. Okay. So in previous chapter, so we focus on demand, or we assume so. Every, so the the GDP will be determined by demand. So essentially, it's going to summarize by the figure on the top. So that's what we learned in the previous chapter. So in the previous chapter, so we derive this aggregate expenditure. Right. So the aggregate expenditure is going to be determined by C plus I. Okay. We start with simple, which is assume there's no government no rest of work okay so in that case the aggregate expenditure or the total gdp in terms of expenditure is going to determine by c and i right and then so we have this uh diagram to explain the idea so whenever we produce too much like if we are on the right hand side of y1 and then you can see so the demand is weaker than what we produced so we have unplanned inventory investment positive meaning so you cannot get rid of what you produced as quick as possible or as planned so that's going to give you a signal so you have produced too much and then so you're going to reduce your production right on the other hand so if we produce too little we move to the left hand side of y1 Okay, so, and then, so you're gonna see the demand is going to exceed supply or exceed what we produce. So that's going to, that's going to uh, um, reduce our inventory very quickly. Okay, so that's, it. that's gonna be a signal we have produced too little. Okay, so, and then, so the, the business is gonna respond by increased production or move to this side. So in either case, we have moved here. And when we discuss this um, aggregate uh, expenditure or income expenditure model, so we take price as given, or prices are given, right? Okay, so and then in this chapter, so we relax that uh, assumption, or in other words, we want to see, so what determines price in our economy, okay? So we first look at how the expenditure responds to price so that's going to give us a relationship in aggregate expenditure and real gdp again so this real gdp from the demand side meaning we look at expenditure right so the way we do that is so to see how this line the aggregate expenditure will adjust with price right so apparently, as we discussed last time, so if price change, so for example, in this case, price decline. So there's going to be a wealth effect, an interest rate effect. The wealth effect just says if the price level decline, and then our purchasing power will increase. Just imagine if it's suddenly overnight, everything becomes cheaper. Okay? And then as we have the same amount of deposit, you have same same um, salary, you expect to receive so that's the case so you become suddenly you become wealthier and then your consumption is going to increase now what's interest rate interest if interest rate just says if price goes down you don't need much cash or you need less cash to to pay for the transaction okay and then so you probably just uh, leave more money in the bank so in that sense, the bank will provide you with lower interest to attract your deposit. Okay? But then, so this re, uh, reduction in interest rate will make the investment expenditure increase because it becomes cheaper to invest. Okay? So both effect leads to a, uh, a shifting up of aggregate expenditure line. So that's just just 
based on the income expenditure model we discussed in previous chapter. So a lower price will end up with a higher level here. So we move to here, right? So let me erase everything so it's easier to see. We start from here. Now we have lower price, so this line, so this line is gonna move up to this line. So now we end up with new uh, income expenditure equilibrium. Okay? And then, then so but here, so in this diagram, there's no price. It means there's no place for price, right? So we just look at so how this line is gonna to respond to price. Okay, and then so we are going to bring the discussion we just had in this diagram into the diagram below. So in the diagram below, we can see, so that's gonna show you price and a real GB. Okay, so here real GB is from the demand side and in terms of expenditure. So in this diagram, we are going to, we are going to extract the information from here. Okay. And the, so we are gonna see, so how demand ex, uh, is gonna respond with price level. Right, so we end up with this downward sloping aggregate demand curve. Okay, just keep in mind, so the reason why it's a downward sloping is because of wealth effect and interest rate effect. Okay, so this is aggregate demand. So now, uh, yeah, so we already look at those things, expectation, wealth, size of physical capital, government policy, so on and so forth, right? Okay, so now, yeah, so we have been looking at this, we also have a look at that. The next things we are going to do is look at aggregate supply curve. So in terms of aggregate supply, we will differentiate in short run versus long run. Okay. So what I'm sh what I'm showing now in this in this slide is short run aggregate supply. So this short run aggregate supply tells us if price increase, the aggregate supply will increase. Okay, and, but what is behind the story of this um, upward slope aggregate supply curve? Okay, so that's that's what I was trying to explain to you toward the end of last class. Right, and before I review that part, so I want to emphasize: so if we move from short run to long run. So you're gonna see this relationship is gonna disappear, right? And I also want to emphasize the way we separate between short run and long run in macroeconomics. Is actually, is actually, is gonna be dedicated by, so whether this upward slope trend in, uh, in um, up, upwards, upward sloping trend holds or not. Right. So basically, so when this when this relationship uh, failed to hold or doesn't hold anymore, and then so we enter the long run. But as I'm going to show you later, so essentially the reason why it failed to hold in long run is because if we give the economy enough time, and then so we have time or we have the opportunity to adjust, to adjust many things, adjust basically, so the employment, adjust output, so on and so forth, right? So if you give the economy enough time, or, or if we look at the long run, and then so this adjustment is going to kill this upward slope um, relationship in price level and uh, aggregate supply. So now let's just focus on short run, and particularly focus on the short run so what happened if price level increase? Okay. So the key to understand that coming from two things, or maybe just one thing, is just sticky nominal wage. Let me write down sticky nominal wage. Okay. So in this in this term, there are two key things. One is sticky, the other is nominal. Wage is just your salary, right? So what is nominal meaning? So it's denominated in currency, like a US dollar. So that just meaning, so your wage subject to inflation. Or in other words, if there's inflation, your actual take home wage 
will decrease. On the other hand, if there's a deflation, the price level declines. And then, so your uh, actual take home wage actually will increase. So this is normal. But what is sticky? Sticky just means, so the wage contract specified between you and your employer is fixed. In the short run, so there's not much room for you or for your employer to change the wage. Like say, for example, you work for uh, bakers. The bakers agree to pay you $10 per hour, and this wage rate is good for six months, okay? Regularly or usually, regardless what happens. Okay, so the, the, the owner or bakers has no um, uh, obligations to adjust your wage. Okay? In the short run, and really, there's not much you can do. Right? So this is called sticky wage. Now, in the next slide, I'm going to show you why this sticky wage is going to affect short run aggregate supply. Okay? So the key things coming from the business decision making. Right? So let me write down. So for the business, what they really care is a profit. Let's use this pie to denote profit. And it's a profit per unit. Okay, let's just write it in here. Profit per unit. So this profit per unit is going to equal to the sale price or revenue. Okay, let's just use P, price of the unit. Minus cost of unit. Okay, so then here, so the cost including two things. Let me just separate them. One is cost of, let's say, the ingredient or material. And the minus cost of labor. Right? Just give you an example. So if I work for um, five guys, right? And then, so what the business owner really care is, so what is the profit per burger they sell? But the profit per burger they can make is depending on three things. Number one is the price of that burger. And number two, the cost of those material or those ingredients like cheese, buns, meat, onion, paper, so on and so forth. Right? Or maybe you include in utility. Right? And there's another cause, which is labor. They need to hire someone to flip the burger, right? So those things, those three things could determine how much profit five guy owners is gonna make. So everything they are gonna do in terms of business planning, we are trying to maximize their profit per burger they're gonna sell. Right, but yes, in reality, so the business may have other concerns, right? So right now they may have concern or they may have incentive to improve their image. Like, uh, so the image in terms of a community service, image in terms of a climate change, image in terms of environmental issues, so on and so forth, right? But for now, we are going to uh, focus on pure economic concern. So the only concern you know, about the profit. Right. So given given this constraint or given this setup, okay, now let's see what happened if the price level increase in the short run. Remember, this is in the short run. So price level increase. So now we are going to see how will that affect their profit. And and finally, how would that is going to affect their supply decision? Okay, so price increase, now we look at right hand side of the equation, right hand side. Okay, so price increase and then so the burger they can sell will increase, good news. But at the same time, it's gonna cause them more to buy those ingredients. Again, buns, meat, right, bacon, cheese, so on and so forth. Right? Okay, so in that sense, the increase in the cost of uh, purchasing material may offset 
the game that their burgers price change they may obtain right but interestingly so a big chunk of cost coming from labor and remember so we are looking at short run and remember so we have this sticky wage okay so this just means in the short run so these things doesn't change so or we just crawl this so there's no impact or there's no change in the cost of labor in the short run so that's the case now we look at this okay so this turn is going to increase this turn is going to increase but this turn is going to stay the constant because cost of material is going to be a fraction of the total price right so and then uh, other fraction of the cost will stay constant so that immediately so we can do the simple algebra so that immediately that means the profit will increase okay so to help you understand it better i can even give you a numeric example so for example so the cost of the burger prior to price change is say eight dollars for each burger so they need uh they cost like one dollar right just means okay so so here so this one dollar means okay just spend like probably 10 minutes for their employers to make a burger right and also we say okay so it's going to cost uh three dollars okay in terms of material so that means so prior to the price change so the profit per burger is going to be four dollars now if there's uh inflation okay say for example the the, uh, the price level increased by 10 percent okay now so the pro the the price of the burger is becomes to 8.8 .8, and the the material becomes to 3.3 .3. and so the wage stay the same still as one and now so you can see their profit becomes to four point let's see 4.5 right so if you really if you factor in the price change so this steer is greater than this is here greater than 4.4. What is 4.4? 4.4, this is the adjust for inflation. Because yeah, I just say there are 10% of inflation. All right? So this numeric example shows, so in the short run, because labor, because the wage is sticky, so when there's a price increase, the profit margin is going to increase. Right? Or here, so profit margin is going to increase. Now profit margins increase, and as I just mentioned earlier, so we assume the only things, uh, the sole objective of the business is increase profit. So that just means they are going to have incentive to increase supply. So they make more profit, because each burger this can sell, make more, more money, right? Again, okay, so this is happening in short run. Now think about, what will happen the worker is going to do okay so the burger price change from eight dollars to eight dollar eighty cents okay to simplify our, our analysis let's say the wage rate for the worker was eight dollars so this wage what this means this just means for the worker, so prior to the price change, so each hour they work, they can buy one burger. Now they can buy less than one burger. So that just means they are going to have a reduced standard of living. Or they have reduced the purchasing power, right? Reduced by 10%. In the short run, not much they can do. But ask yourself, if you are in this situation, will you suck it up for like uh, forever? Or are you going to do something, something to change? So in reality, what happens is after a few months, so you feel 
you start to feel the pain and you feel this is not fair, right? Because the owner is going to take all the profit or, or owner is going to benefit from a price change. And you don't get a, a, a penny for out of this. And so in the short run, so you understand this, there's a, uh, there's a contract binding, right? And you agree to work for them at $8. Now over time, so you figure, so I may do something. So you either go to your manager's office to complain or to argue for a pay raise, or you may just find an alternative um, the business so that you get compensated by what you work for, right? So then, so what that means to the original business? So that just means over time, over time. So the business must adjust the wage, okay, or here. So that just means the profit margin, sorry, the cost will increase. So this is gonna increase from one to $1.1 to reflect, to reflect the changing for a burger, changing price for burger. So make sure so the employee to get the same purchasing power. Now if the price increases to 1.01, .01, so the profit is going to drop to 4.4. But so yes, it, uh, in long term, so the price increased from 4 to 4.4. But in real term, in real term, so the business, the business didn't make additional money, meaning so they won't have incentive to change or they, they will cut their supply. Right? So let me erase everything so we can So now we are ready to, to, to summarize what we have learned, right? So sticky wage will affect short run aggregate supply. This is because nominal wage are often determined by contract that was signed some time ago. So this, is, this just reflects a sticky wage. Okay. And so given this sticky wage, a higher aggregate price level leads to higher profit and increased aggregate output in the short run. Right, so this sentence. They just summarize what I just explained to you, both with this equation and with a simple numerical example. Right, so this is in short run. Okay. Right, so let me see if we consider in reality, many firms in, uh, uh, many firms are competing in a very competitive industry. So they have no control over price, okay? So, but some are not, okay? So what that means is, just think about Apple, right? So they have sort of market power. If the, mar if the demand is strong, so they can raise the price. So that is going to make these, uh, upward slope trend even stronger. Why is that? They just go back. So this just says if we are looking at a business or a, a, the firm has strong market power. So when the demand, when the supply increase uh, due to the de uh, high demand, so they are going to raise their price even further. Because in the previous example, I, I, I gave to you, so the change in price, is just coming from aggregate price increase. So on top of that, if the business has market power, so they may raise the price even further due to the strong demand from the economy. Okay, so that's going to support uh, our argument for this upward slope, short aggregate supply curve even further. Okay, so now similarly, as we did for uh, aggregate demand, now we want to look at the factors can cause the shift of the short run aggregate supply curve. Okay? So this curve can shift to the left or shift to the right. As we are gonna see, so that's going to correspond to a decline if shift to the left or this increase in supply if shift to the right. Okay? So there are a few things can cause the short run aggregate supply curve to shift. Okay. One is commodity price. What is component commodity? Think about oil. 
sing about soybean, sing about corns. Right? So those, or, or maybe you sing about copper, gold, silver. Right? So those are the essential ingredient or essential input for industrial production. Right? So the price of this commodity will have impact on the short run aggregate supply curve. Right? Uh, second, nominal wage. Right? So the nominal wage of fake aggregate supply through its impact on the cost. Right? So if the nominal wage increase, and then so the profit margin will decline, aggregate supply will decline. Right? But just keep in mind, so this nominal wage change is different from the sticky wage. Yes, yeah, sticky, so wage is sticky. Right? So in the short run, so that's when you sign the contract. But here when we say nominal wage change, it says, okay, so because overall, uh, the industry-wise or economy-wise, there is a change in a change in nominal wage. Okay, so that's different, different in nature. Now, the third factor that can cause uh, short-run aggregate supply curve to shift comes from the productivity. So, what is productivity? So, essentially, it's how efficient we can produce. If there's if there's a new technology, allows us to produce things more efficiently or in a cheaper uh, fashion. So that's going to shift the aggregate supply. Again, that's in the short run, right? So actually, so each of these factors uh, affect short run aggregate supply curve through, through change in change pro producers profit. Okay. So that gives the producer incentive to shift the supply, okay? And here, so we just look at two cases. One case, the curve shift to the left, we have a decline or decreasing short run aggregate supply. So how we see that? It just says for given level, the real GDP, so again, so this is a look at supply side, okay? So supply side meaning we just measure in the product, how much we're produce. Okay, and also I want to just remind you, so we said there are three ways to look at GDP. One is look at expenditure. So that's essentially is from demand side. Or we look at product. So that's from supply side. In the middle, we can look at income. Right, so there are three ways to look at GDP. Okay, so on the left hand side, so the curve shift to the left. That just means fix the price level. We produce less. Okay, so that just that just says level worth shift represent a decrease in short run aggregate supply. Conversely, the curve shift to the right. And then, so we say there's an increase in short run aggregate supply. Okay. So what can cause the curve shift to right or what can cause an increase in short run aggregate supply? First, a decrease in commodity price. So for example, the price for oil declines. Decrease in nominal wage, right? Or increase in productivity. Right. So in reality, so what can cause a decrease in nominal wage? Okay. So one possibility is, say for example, there's a tax call. Right? And then so this tax call gives the business opportunity to cut the nominal wage without 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 get some backlash from the employees. Because what the employees really cares is their disposable income. If the tax rate is if the tax rate decline, and so they will be okay with a lower wage, right? Because their disposable income or their take home wage, net of tax, may stay the same or even higher. Okay, so this is give you one example. In reality. 
when we may have a decrease in nominal wage. The, un the other possible cause for decreasing wage is due to uh, high, un high unemployment. So this happens in recession, right? Or in, in the current pandemic. So if everybody know or understand, so the high unemployment rate is high, okay? That just means uh, for me, it's difficult to find a job if I lose my job. If that's the case, I may willing to work for a lower wage, right? Because otherwise I may, I, may, I may lose my job or I may don't have a job, right? So I would be okay so if for work for lower wage. And so in that case, so the nominal wage may decline. But again, so this nominal wage decline is different from the sticky wage we talked about. Right. So the last factor can cause the short run aggregate supply curve shift to right is due to increase in productivity. Think about the PC, the interaction PC back in 1970 and 1980, or the internet since 2000. So that increase the productivity of worker. So that's increased aggregate supply. Okay. Uh, on the other hand, so if if the things we just discussed happen in the other direction, and then so we are going to see the short run aggregate supply shift to left or decline. For example, increase in commodity price, right? So the oil price spikes, think about in 1980. Or if there's an increase in nominal wage, think about we are in an expansion. Okay, so there are plenty of jobs. And now it is is uh, is employers' uh, challenge in terms of fill their uh, vacancy. So they have hard time, or it becomes less easy to find a worker to work for them. So in that situation, so the employer may win to pay higher wage, or the nominal wage may increase. Or the third possibility is a decline in productivity. Right, so we are running out of innovation. Okay? So we are running out of technological breakthrough. So each of those factors will reduce the producer's profit margin. So that's going to reduce their incentive to produce. So that's going to lead to a, a decline in short run accurate supply, or the curve will shift to the right. Okay. So now we can look at these practice questions. The short run aggregate supply curve will shift to right. So let's go A, when input costs rise. Now actually this is going to lead a decline. Oh, by the way, so the, the, the short run aggregate, aggregate supply curve shift to right, meaning there's increase in supply. If input costs rise, leads to a decline in supply. Now, when tax rise, it also leads to a decline in supply because the business profit margin or the net tax profit will decline. Uh, C, when interest rate rise, actually this is going to raise the cost of investment or raise the cost of operation. So that's going to reduce the supply. Lastly, when productivity rise, yes, that's going to increase supply. Okay, so the answer is D. Okay. So for now, so let's just take a few minutes break and then we continue our discussion by looking at long run aggregate supply.